Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. My name is Noor. I'm a graphic designer and illustrator who is passionate about helping people creatively and that's exactly why I started this YouTube channel, Design Draw Do. And welcome to all the new subscribers and all the people who are new to this channel. There's quite a lot of you and I'm really excited to have you on board because today we are going to be talking about a topic that maybe, well actually probably all of you have experienced, which is how to beat the learning curve being a beginner in anything can always suck because you may be impatient like me and you just want to get straight into learning and creating the good stuff but um, there's always going to be a learning hurdle that you have to get over and today I'm going to be kind of demonstrating how you can get over this with a few tips and time lapses which I'll be sharing by testing out this new software which I'll be introducing to you in the next live segment so take it away past Noor. Right, so the software that I'm going to be learning to use is this app called Realistic Paint Studio, right here. And it's a relatively new software, and I basically started seeing it on the internet and I wanted to jump on the bandwagon as well. So it basically does what it says. It's a traditional art simulator for digital platforms. A lot of people have already reviewed or tried this program and it's really good at what it does. So you can see if I click create new, it brings up different options. So I have drawing, watercolor, oil painting. Um, so pretty much it can do a lot of things. Even though it doesn't have acrylic or gouache, uh, it is still pretty versatile. If we move on, there's also this thing called tutorials, which um, really gives you a lot of different ways to learn how to use the app. I've tried it myself. Um, basically what they do is they give you a example on this side, on the left side, and you have to make your own on the right side. Now, I've, as you can see, obviously I didn't do very well, but <laughs> this is tutorial step 16. So if you can see in the corner here, it shows you the steps. So I will just, oh gosh. All right, so tutorial step one, it kind of starts you off like this. And then you can see it just slowly, slowly builds up. So it's actually relatively easy to learn how to make something. And it basically, if you also noticed, uh, on this side of the screen, it goes through different um, brush type options and things like that. And it's really cool because if you click on this, you get a whole bunch of um, tools to use. And it also shows you how this tool works on the left hand function. And you can also use it yourself, you know, try things out kind of see how it works yourself and there's all kinds of options I'm not going to run through all of them I mean you can go and find tutorials yourself on the realistic painting studio app um, on how people use it but it basically has a bunch of different toolboxes where you can find all kinds of different things you know pencils paintbrushes it even has soft pastels which you know if you've been following this channel for a while you know that I really really love um, some of them are paid, like this is a paid option, so I have no idea what it does, but that's pretty much it. The cool thing about this app is that you can also make these photos IG ready. So for example, if I click on, which button was it? Yeah, the camera button. It will process. And let's see what magic happens. Yeah, so you can see it makes this like cool kind of 3D rendering type of situation where it is basically a photo that you would take if you wanted a nice, you know, Instagram shot. You can kind of cycle through the options with this arrow in the corner. Yeah, so you can see, very nice, very aesthetic. Kind of looks, you know, on first glance it kind of looks like you took this photo yourself. Um, but I'm pretty sure my followers would be able to suss me out because I do not take such nice photos of my work. Anyway, but it's a cool option for you to try. I mean, this is really nice. Um, yeah, and it's it's really nice. And there's also a way to save this, just this photo by itself, which I conveniently don't know how to remember. Oh yes, you click on the tool icon up here and then you click this very small share button and you can save it as just a JPEG or a PNG or you can save the realistic file, which is what I showed you earlier where they do the whole rendering and they set it up for you. All right, so that's cool. And you can also change a bunch of different um, you know, toggles and things like that. So for example, I've I've set the double tap to um, to undo, as you have in Procreate and other uh, drawing softwares. 
I think the main thing that I'm not a big fan of is sometimes the gesture controls are a bit awkward. Um, like for example, these things, sometimes if I click this, it doesn't come up. It's really small, like this interface, so it's kind of hard to see. Um, and for example, if I'm trying to change, you know, the, uh, the tool, and I'll click, let's say I'll click a pencil, you know, sometimes I'll forget that there's an OK button down here. Um, and I just want to get straight to it. So, you know, it's it, the the buttons are kind of small. That's the main issue that I have, really. And with that, I think we'll just jump back into the voiceover and uh, just get started, you know, going through some time lapse paintings and talking through what tips I have for you guys in order to beat the learning curve. All right, back to voiceover noir to now explain the tips that I have to overcome the learning hurdle. So the first tip that I have is to start off messy. So you can see that in the beginning of this uh, particular drink painting, I start off with a value study that I've talked about in previous videos, where I'm just basically laying down the kind of composition, the values and the shades which will kind of, which came came from the original reference photo and I'm using one of the dark pencils for that and I'm just being quite messy and free and loose with my drawings in the beginning and then I later on go in with a sharper pencil to neaten things up and by being messy in the beginning you kind of start off with no pressure to make this perfect drawing and you're also being a bit more creative by doing so. I realized as well that this is the case when I'm doing a soft pastel drawing you should be really free and kind of messy in the beginning because you can refine it later on. But if you start being really neat in the right from the beginning, it's really hard to kind of get that painterly quality and that kind of creativity that comes out of a painting, you know, because you've become really stiff right from the get go. So just be messy and just don't care about how things start. The second thing I would say is to draw something simple but doable. Now, I don't normally paint things like food or drink because I find it's too simple for me. Like, I mean, obviously I'm not putting it down or anything, but you know, I prefer doing things like landscapes and backgrounds and things like that. But in order to master the software, you do not need to create a good masterpiece. <laughs> you may be familiar with one software, but as soon as you pick up another one, you may find that your skill level decreases. So you won't be able to create the exact same thing as you would create another software. So for example, let's say I work well in Procreate, I may create landscapes in there, but that doesn't mean that I should start immediately by doing landscapes in this new software because I might find that I get easily frustrated because I have no clue what the tools do, how they work, and especially with a software like this where you have all these kinds of different tools and so many options and they all behave quite differently to, uh, let's say, Procreate or uh, Adobe Paint, you know, Fresco, because um, they are. this software has tools which are acting like actual traditional uh, tools. So start off with something simple and doable. My third tip is to draw multiple things and draw them quickly and not be too detailed, not get too fussed about the details um, in order to familiarize yourself with the program quickly. Now that's not to say you can't spend time if you don't want to, but I would say in order to not pressure yourself too much, try, just try and be as quick as you can and do speed paints when you are doing these things. So you saw in the beginning that I did a drinks painting and now I've moved on to oil painting. Um, so the drinks painting was made with like colored marker and uh, pencils and things like that. But this one is just purely oiled. Um, and you can see I'm just testing a bunch of different brushes and colors and trying out all the new features. And it's pretty cool actually. I would say the final tip is actually uh, specific to this app and that is learn the basics of the traditional art form. So for example, I have no clue how to use oil paints in real life and that I feel like that kind of reflected in the digital drawing because I have no clue where to start, which colors to put down first, do I go from light to dark, dark to light. Of course it doesn't make much difference because it is digital and I can go back and undo and use layers and things like that but it still does help if you have that foundation. And I must say that even though I did use multiple layers for this specific painting, it still bled under. So, you know, when I'm doing these light rays at the end, um, they still kind of bled through with the black in front. So it was kind of, it kind of didn't really make it much of a difference. And I think the point is that it's supposed to really simulate traditional drawing. So 
you know, you can't really um, get away with the digital cheats that we normally get away with. Anyhow, it was a really fun experience learning to use this app and I thoroughly enjoyed myself and I'm really excited to uh, continue to make more stuff with this. And I would highly advise you to check out some tutorials on how to use this app and download it yourself. It's not that expensive and I think it's really, really worth the price that it has. With that, I will end this video here and I'll see you next week for another creative video on this channel. Bye.